meet you in the future. I'm going to meet you in the future. I will see, even before you talk, the way you stand, the way you walk, and the English you speak, and the place you are walking, I can tell you are in the Achievers Forum. And something has taken place in your heart and taken place in your life, an achiever you will be in Jesus' name. Now, you know what I learned when I was your age? I'm still using today. That's what makes us achievers. I learned two times four, tell me. I learned eight times two. Your achievers are not talking. And three times nine. You know, I still use that today. And when you are an achiever, what you learn anytime, it carries on. It's not just to hear, something comes into you, and what you learn, you keep on using. And when you use that every day and every day, and you're always going to get results. I'm always getting results. I said I'm always getting results. You always get results in Jesus' name. And so, as we come this afternoon, you receive everything personal. Everything personal. And what you have, you keep, you hold, you embrace, and you keep on using it every day of your life in Jesus' name. I can. I can. I can. I'll try. I said I'll try. What if you never tried? There you are. You are strong. Daddy buys a bicycle. He provides it for you. You have the strength. You have the locomotive energy. And your, and your joints are all right. And the bicycle is there. Everything about the bicycle is all right. But you never try. You never climb on the bicycle. And you climbed on the bicycle. You tried to ride. You fell down. And you say, that is all. But you pick it up again. And pick it up again. Then you will ride. And while you are riding, when you start riding, you are very careful. You hold the handles very tight and you are looking forward and you are doing the pedaling. And then if you do that every day, every day, every day, one day you just get the bicycle, you jump on it. And then when you are riding, you see a friend, you wave to them. Sometimes the two hands are up and you keep on riding. Why? because you practiced and so everything you learn today you start i know you can i said i know you can and then you try just try just try just try and as you try you might make a mistake jump on that thing and try again and then you make a mistake jump on that thing you may you do it again and you never give up Somebody tell me, I'll never give up. And then one day, as you are driving and learning and riding, whatever, you are waving your hand, an achiever is riding. An achiever is riding. And you are going to ride to the very top in Jesus' name. Now, I said all that to tell you this, that Forget the crowd, I'm talking to you in particular. That I am here just for you. Don't think about any other person. I'm here just for you. You'll be an achiever. Where is the person I'm talking to tonight? Where is he? Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight and we bless your name. We thank you because everything is available. Every provision is available. And I know that you placed us here not to be a failure. You placed everyone here to be an achiever. An achiever everyone will be in Jesus' name. 
I will pray that all the resources you have given us, all the promises you have given us, all the provisions you have given us will make use of them. We'll try, we'll try, we'll do, and we'll act. And as everything good is activated within us, we'll get to that summit and to that peak and to that destination in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, by your anointing, by your inspiration, by your authority, I proclaim all that leads into me today an achiever in Jesus' name. Accomplish it in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody an achiever there said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down, but understand. As we come to the word now, you pay attention just like you pay attention in your class. And then you understand what you are learning today is going to come out every day for the rest of your life. And you need to be remembering and recollecting and connecting with everything you learn today so that the spirit of the achiever and the spirit of the conqueror will keep on walking in your life every day, every moment, in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm talking to you, and I'm teaching you, and building you on this subject, an achiever's partnership with God. An achiever's partnership with God. If you look at your Bible, in Luke chapter 18, reading there in verse 23, verse 27, Luke chapter 18, and reading from verse 27. And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I'm going to read that again, but notice what I'm doing now. And he said, The things which are impossible with me I've cut off the end. The things which are impossible with me are possible with God. I need to look at my life and I need to think about my present level, my present occupation, my present engagement. What do I find impossible with me? What subject do I find impossible with me? What line of action do I find impossible with me? And what action I want to take the action. I want to make the move. I want to do that thing. But it appears impossible with me. Why is it impossible with me? my thought life the way i am thinking that's new that's strange i never thought of that before i've never done that before anything unknown anything that is new anything that other people have told me there are some uh, students ahead of me i'm talking about you and I ask them, you've been in this class before, and you have been in this situation before, what do you think about this subject? What do you think about this action? What do you think about this engagement? And my seniors tell me, that's tough, that's difficult, that's almost impossible. In fact, all through that session, I never made it and that registers on your heart. Your senior brother, your senior sister at home is discussing with you. He's just coming back from school and then you're talking together casually. And that your senior brother, senior sister said, you know, I enjoy everything at school. 
except this. And then uh, you begin to think in your heart, if everybody around, if all my seniors and if my siblings, if they say this is hard, this is tough, this is impossible, guess what? Who am I? If those who are better than I, if those who have gone beyond me, if they say you cannot achieve that, who am I? And so I begin to pile up things in my mind, in my memory, and I begin to say this is impossible with me. Today, God is going to turn that around. And the Lord is saying, when I made you, I didn't make you like a copycat. I didn't make you like if that person finds it impossible, then for you it's impossible. Think of yourself as an individual. And you are not in the mood, you are not in the class of so and so and such and such and so and so. The things that are impossible with me are possible with God. And today I take impossibility out of my language. I'm talking about somebody there. I'm talking about somebody there. Today, I take impossibility out of my language. You didn't say that. I know with God. I know with God. God in me. God around me. God helping me. God supporting me. God enlightening me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, now, as I told you, what I learned as a teenager, what I learned as a young person, two times four equals age, I still apply today. I still remember today, and what you learn now, that that for me appears impossible, but I know with God in me, with God supporting me, with God enabling me, and with God energizing me, and with God being my partner, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen that must go with you every time. Every time you confront a problem, every time you confront a situation, every time you confront somebody, something you had thought difficult, something you had thought impossible, as two times four equals eight goes with you through life, this must go with you, with man. All things, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That calls you to partnership with God. It is that partnership that you have with God that makes all that possible in your life. Possible. I said possible. Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 37. In Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 37, it says with God nothing shall be impossible have you seen that in your Bible I'm asking a question have you seen that in your Bible yes. we're going to read that together one two three go for with God nothing shall be impossible I'm signing into for a particular cause, and that is the cause I believe the Lord has created for me. He created that career for me, He created me for that career, and when we come together, I'm going to be an achiever. And then, when I'm feeling firm, somebody is telling me, You're choosing that cause, that's tough, that's difficult. And as I study the people that have gone through that course, the many people were maybe about 7%, 9% that ever made it. And then I remember, as I remember 2 times 4 equals 8, I remember with God, nothing 
shall be impossible. I, I wanted you to say that. With God helping me, with God supporting me, with God enabling me, nothing shall be impossible. Where others failed, talk now. Where others failed, I will succeed. Who is that person? Where are you? Where others failed, I will succeed. Look at verse 45. Look at verse 45. And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. Hold on. You know, when we went to class those days, and those teachers came, I just believed and accepted what those teachers said. You know, when my teacher came and he said, class, Three times seven is 21. I didn't look at my, the student by my side. Do you think that is true? Do you believe that? Can you accept that? All of us, as the teacher said, seven times three is, everybody tell me, 21. Whether it is three times seven, or you change and you say seven times three, it doesn't matter when you cross from this side to the other side what is true here is what is true there if you are standing up three times seven is 21 if you're sitting down three times seven is 21 if you are running and while you are almost catching your breath and you're almost fainting and say three times seven what is that now that does not change with your emotion that does not change with each day of the week that does not change with whatever class you are you move from this class to move to another class that thing is still true the same thing with the word of god when it says in partnership with God, in association with God, that all things are possible, you might move from this class to that class, you might move from this school to that school, you might be sitting down, you might be standing up, anywhere you are, anytime you are thinking about it, it is still true, all things are possible with God. Uh, is that right? While we're here, and I'm with you. All things are possible with God. If I am not here and you are by yourself, it doesn't change that I'm not there with you, that you are not here with me, does not change. Seven times three equals 21. It is still the same. And from this day in your life, anywhere you are, you are in the hostel, you are in the dormitory, you are in the class. God will support you. You will do all things. You can do all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I want you to look at the gender there. The gender, uh, you know, we have he, we have she, we have male, we have female, we have boy, we have girl. Look at the gender there. The gender there is blessed is, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. You know, there are some people that say that's not ladies field. That's not ladies area. That's not girls area. You know, it's for everyone. For the lady, three times seven, ladies tell me. And for the men, tell me, three times seven. God is the same for everyone. Yeah, boy, he'll help you. You are a girl, he'll help you. He'll make all things possible in your life. He is your partner. He is your creator. And when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, all things are going to change in your life. 
In fact, I'm so happy and I'm so refreshed. I know I'm talking to somebody today. God will become active in your life. He'll become proactive in your life. And God never sees a problem. He doesn't have any solution to. He'll be a solution in your life in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to divide the message to three parts. One, two, three. Are you all right? Number one, the promise of partnership with God. The promise of partnership with God. Understand, God is not a man that he should lie. Somebody said, I'll be with you in a moment. You kept on waiting and waiting, and lo and behold, it's not there. A, a doctor said, bring him, bring her, and bring her at 10 o'clock. And then your parents got there at 10 o'clock, and the doctor gave us appointment. Oh, the doctor had an urgent assignment somewhere. He's gone. Come back another time. Our God is not like that. When God gives you appointment, and you get there, you'll find God right there. And today you have an appointment with God, and he gives you a promise, and today you'll find God right there. He's for you. Say he is for me. You're not talking well. He is for me. The promise of partnership with God. Number two, the prayer for pardon from God. The prayer for pardon from God. God understands. God knows. He knows you are down here. He knows it's up there. And he knows how you are. You know, sometimes the way we live our lives, we see other people running somewhere. We run there. We didn't even know why we're running there. We see other people doing something. We don't consider whether it is wise or foolish. And we just uh, do what they're doing. And in so doing, actually, we were not living our lives. We were living the lives of other people copying them, imitating them, mocking them, and because we did what they were doing, it landed us in a place we didn't want to find ourselves. And now we're there, and we're feeling guilty and condemned, and God says, I understand, I understand. I understand the origin and the genesis of how that thing happened. Come, I'll cleanse you up. I'll wash you up. I'll forgive you. I will look at you as if you never sinned in your life. Only God can do that, and the Lord will do it for you. Yeah. The prayer for pardon from God. Number three is the peak of performance. The peak of performance. We're going to the top. Somebody there say, I am going to the top. The peak of performance through God. Number one, let's look at number one, is the promise of partnership with God. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41, and we're looking at verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, we're reading from verse 10. Are you there? Have you found Isaiah? Or is Isaiah running away from you? If, if you've got Isaiah, where are you? God bless you. Ah, you didn't need to understand that is prayer. The Lord will keep on blessing you every moment of your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 41, we're looking at verse 10. In verse 10, fear thou not. For I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Uh, you, you, know, you know, sometimes I'm going to a particular class, and uh, I, I, I love that teacher, I love the subject, but the teacher has a wrong impression about me. 
and he has sometimes openly uh, mentioned that and he says uh-uh they are coming again have you done your assignment i know you never do your assignment i know you'll never make it and every time he speaks negative to me and he says i'll never make it and anytime i want to go to that class i'm afraid I don't know what he's going to say today. I don't know the way she's going to look at me today. And God said, you know, it's like you missed the opportunity of going to a particular place. And mommy asked you, did you get there? No, I didn't go. I was afraid. And mommy held your hand and said, let's go. Don't worry, I'll take you there. And then as you are going, you are not looking at the surrounding as circumstances. You are looking at mommy. And mommy is going to say the right thing at the right time to the right person. And they are going to say, welcome on in. We have been waiting for you. God says, what are you afraid of? Come. He'll take your hand. He'll take you there. To that class, he'll take your hand and take you there. To that thing you're afraid of, and to that personality you're afraid of, he'll take your hand and he will lead you there. And he says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Now you understand? Let me go back a little to the English class. Uh, the uh, teacher said, I was. What's that? tell me the teacher said i will be what's that and now the teacher said i am what's that god is the ever present i am it's not of yesterday alone it's not of tomorrow alone what he was before because he's eternal is the great i am that i am he said I am with thee. Thank God there's nothing to fear anymore. Yeah. And remember, and remember, as you remember two times four equals eight every time, even when you're feeling weak and tired and sickly, if somebody asks you two times four, even if your voice is low, you will still say it's eight the same way God is with you at all times. Amen. When you are sick, is your healer. Amen. When you are depressed, is your deliverer. Amen. When you are happy, is your supporter. Amen. And when you are ignorant, is your teacher. And he says, I'm always there, I'm always there, I'm not far away. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee you are strong yeah. somebody said every time an exam is coming i get sick i get weak and then my heart will be palpitating i will not know what i'm going to put down that thing will change from today yeah. because he said that time exam is coming that time you are in the exam hall, everything you have uh, studied, somebody said, when I'm afraid like that, everything will fly away from my brain. That's in the past, today, things are different now. Because I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee. Are you there? With the left hand. I will uphold thee with the left hand. With what? With the right hand of my righteousness. How lucky I am. I'm talking about myself now. How fortunate I am. How exalted I am. I'm talking about myself now. I, you didn't talk about yourself. You are fortunate. I said you are fortunate. The Lord has promised to be in partnership with you. Yeah. What's the difference between me and another person? What's the difference between you and another person? Somebody does not have God as a partner. Number one, living without his partnership. Think about somebody going through life and is living without the partnership of the Creator. 
the partnership of the healer, the partnership of the upholder, the partnership of the helper, the partnership of the strengthener. Living without his partnership, I will not live without his partnership. Number two, limitation without his partnership. You know, if you're not in partnership with the Lord, you're limited in a lot of things. Limited in a lot of things. You'll be a, a mere man, a mere woman, a mere boy, a, ma a mere girl. All you have is the energy of the flesh. And the flesh is so soft, and the flesh is so weak, you cannot go too far without the partnership of the Almighty. That's why today, as he invites you, and he says, I've been waiting for you, you know, I want to help you, and the achievement we are talking about, I am the one that will hold your hand and take you up, give me your hand, and come into partnership with the Almighty God. You will do that immediately, and your life will turn around. Amen. Number three, lawlessness without his partnership. You know the people that do not have uh, his partnership, that is the partnership of the Lord, they don't see beyond their nose. They don't see beyond a step. And therefore, they are here, they are there, they are everywhere. They do not know the consequence of what they are doing or the road they are taking or the place they are going. That's why they are lawless. Let me explain to you. Everything God does, He does by law. There is a physical law. If you throw something up, it must come down. There are people that do not know that, and therefore they are lawless, and therefore they jump up, and they land in a ditch, and they break their bowls. Why? They're lawless. They're not walking according to the physical law. They have never heard about the force of gravity. There are spiritual laws. And the spiritual laws too, they are as good, as strong as the physical law. And when people don't know any kind of thing that God says, God says what you sow is what you will reap. The life you live now is what will come out in the future. They don't know that. And because they don't know what they sow at the present time is what they will reap in the future. They are careless. They are lazy. They are indolent. They do not do anything. And eventually, because of that lawlessness, look at what they are reaping. But now, when you have partnership of the Lord, I said number one, living without his partnership. I said number two, limitation without his partnership. I said number three, there is lawlessness without his partnership. Number four now, number four, lifting up with his partnership. When God has partnership with you, he will lift you up to his own level. He is an achiever. You will be an achiever. Amen. He is creative. You will be creative. Amen. He is progressive. And you will be progressive in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm happy today to tell you that from this very day, as you come into partnership with the Almighty God, there is a lifting up. Even in your spirit now, in your inner man now, in your conscious or conscious mind now, there is a change. I say there is a change. There is a lifting up already. Number four is lifting up with his partnership. Number five, limitlessness. Limitlessness with his partnership. Your life will not be limited again in Jesus' name. You came from primary school to secondary school, lifting up limitlessness. You are going to go from secondary school and you are going to tertiary institution, university, college, lifting up in Jesus' name. 
you get to undergraduate, you are going to get above that graduate level, lifting up in Jesus' name. No limitation in your life anymore. All the supplies you need to make you successful and to make you an achiever. All the gold in the world, all the riches in the world, all the wealth in the world belongs to your Father. It will supply every need of your life in Jesus' name. Number six is liberation through his partnership. You cannot be in partnership with the Almighty God and then be limited and you're tied down there. And they said sometimes, you know, it's Satan that tied him, it's demons that tied her, and it's evil spirit. All those things are broken in Jesus' name. Uh, you understand? There are some people, every time they pray, every time they pray, they must give recognition to Satan. And they say, Satan, I know you are there. I know you want to stop my way. Uh-uh, what's the matter with you? Are you in partnership with God? I said, are you in partnership with God? Out of sight is out of mind. Out of mouth is out of of mind when you don't mention somebody's name for one week for two weeks for one month for three months and you don't even mention the name sometimes you forget the name and the fellow sees that you're not even giving recognition to him he wants to go to another person that will give recognition to him stop giving recognition to Satan is not your brother is not your uncle is not your helper is not an agent to stand by you and stay with you every time mention the name of Jesus more and mention the name of Almighty God more and mention the Holy Ghost more you will never be disappointed and if a Satan is coming around and you saw the Father God there saw Jesus Christ that we him on the cross of Calvary and saw the Holy Ghost there all all around you and then he sees the Bible in front of you and he's sharing the promises of God out of your mouth that devil will run away because you understand it's no match to divinity it's no match to the Almighty God don't mention his name don't invite him he's not invited here he will not be in our midst in Jesus name Number six, liberation from or through his partnership. And number seven, life eternal in his partnership. What do I have? Life eternal in his partnership. What do you have? Life eternal in his partnership. He's giving us the promise and he said, fear not. If God says, fear not, I will not fear. And he says, I am with thee. He says, be not dismayed, be not depressed, be not be oppressed, and be not deranged, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Somebody say, Amen. amen. I will help you. Another, Amen. amen. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us here, Behold, behold, behold. What that saying? It says, put your hand in the pocket and stand like a king's kid, like a child of God, like one that has partnership with God. And behold, he said, don't even think you are going to fight. God will fight for you. Amen. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Amen. They shall be as nothing. Amen. You didn't hear that one. Amen. They shall be as nothing. You know, I see one of my daughters there, and then she's crying and crying and crying. And I said, daughter, what's the problem? He said, uh, there is something fighting with me. And I said, what's the name of that thing fighting with you? He said, it's nothing. 
nothing nothing is fighting against you and you are crying if it's nothing there's nothing to cry about i said if nothing is fighting against you there is nothing to cry about all the people that try to fight against your progress there'll be nothing all the people that are threatening you are going to fall you are going to fail there will be nothing he says all them that try to fight against you they shall be as nothing they that strive with thee shall perish that's the place to say amen, amen. That's number one. Let's go to number two now. Number two is the prayer for pardon from God. The prayer for pardon from God. You know, when you are born, you are born into a family. And good enough, look at your brother ahead of you. And look at his sister ahead of you. And then you've done something naughty. You've done something you know, that you know when daddy comes back, he's going to say, who did this? Uh-huh. And you're going to pay for what you've done. And then your senior brother or your senior sister says, let me tell you something. Anytime we do something wrong and we know how to appease daddy, how to appease mommy, and if uh, immediately daddy comes and we knelt down and he said uh, daddy says get up you say no i'm sorry what is it and then i'm sorry what have you done i am sorry okay i forgive you but tell me now what is it they tell you the secret of having pardon uh, from daddy or mommy the same thing that those who have known god before us they have told us how to always get pardon, forgiveness, and love, and reconnection with the Lord. And look at this now. We're looking at the sinner's prayer. We're looking at the Savior's pardon. And we're looking at the soul's peace. Peace in your soul. Peace will come to everyone today. And look at, uh, look at the word of God. He tells us now in the prayer, we're going to pray Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Understand, he is near. He is not near to kill you. He is not near to whip you. He is not near to condemn you. He is near anybody in need of pardon there. Anybody in need of forgiveness. That's why he's near. Anybody in need of happiness there. Anybody in need of peace of mind. That's why he's near. And then we're told in verse 7. Look at verse 7. It says, let the wicked forsake his way as you come and you say, I know. That way is what is eating me up. That way, that thing I'm doing uh, is what is giving me guilt and condemnation. And so, that thing is not helping me. I go that direction, but it's not helping me. Okay, I'm going to forsake that thing. Let your righteous man forsake his thoughts. Actually, thoughts come before action. Thoughts precede action. If when somebody thinks, I'm going to slap her, that thought will come first before the action of slapping. That's why it says, as God is near, and he comes with love, and he comes with pardon, and he comes with forgiveness, let the righteous man forsake his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord. When somebody is doing bad, bad things, it's like a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter is wandering here and there, doing those evil things. 
when he's doing that, he's not conscious of the presence of God. And now he wants forgiveness, and God will forgive. I said God will forgive. Because of that, he comes from wandering around, he comes back to the Lord. It says, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Mercy this afternoon. Yeah. Love this afternoon. Yeah. Forgiveness this afternoon. Yeah. Peace of mind this afternoon. Yeah. And then it says, let him return to our God. You know, the prophet is so certain. He says, he's our God. I went to him before he forgave me. Jeremiah went to him. He forgave him. Ezekiel went to him and he forgave him. The prodigal went to him. He forgave him. He never rejects anyone. No matter how far they have gone. No matter how bad they are. He is our God. God, the loving, pardoning, forgiving God, let him come. He will forgive you too. He'll forgive everyone in Jesus' name. For he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon. Number one, the sinner's prayer. The sincere prayer. The saving prayer. That's the prayer that says, what is prayer? Prayer is just talking to God like you talk to a friend. Somebody said it will help you. Somebody said, I look at the face you are looking. It's like you're feeling guilty for something. Tell me, I'll forgive you. Even before you tell me, I tell you I'm going to forgive you. And then you open your mouth. Actually, this is what I did. Dumb thing foolish sin, sinful sin. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. And God says, all right, you are forgiven. I said you are forgiven. It says as you come like that, you pray the sinner's prayer. The sinner's prayer is, I have sinned. I've done something foolish. I don't know what came upon me. I am the one responsible. I'm guilty. I'm sorry. God said that's enough. I forgive you. You didn't say amen to that? Yeah. It's a sincere prayer. It's a sincere prayer. There's no pretense there. There's no acting there. There's no hypocrisy there. Sincere prayer. And it is a saving prayer. That prayer will save your soul. Yeah. Number two, the Savior's pardon. When you talk like that, it says, A God will abundantly pardon abundantly pardon that means the blanket will more than cover you the forgiveness will more than cover you the pardon will more than cover you is the savior's pardon is a sure pardon a sure pardon it is not something you'll be doubting am i forgiven am i not forgiven he says so it says i will abundantly pardon you you are forgiven in jesus name it's a settled pardon. Settled pa pardon. It's not something uh, when I'm going, I'll be looking back. Have you forgiven me? Am I still all right? Are you going to remember that thing against me? God said forever and ever it is settled. When he forgives you and when he pardons you, that pardon will be settled in Jesus' name. In fact, he says it this way. He said, I will put all your sins in the sea of God's forgetfulness. I will not remember it against your life anymore in Jesus' name. And then number three is the soul's peace. You have peace in your soul. You have peace in your mind. And then it's a solemn of peace. It's like deep waters in the river it will be very solemn and it is sustained peace that peace will continue today you'll have peace tomorrow you'll have peace next week you're still having peace and when i come back and then we meet i said hi about that peace you say pastor that peace is still there it is sustained in jesus name 
the prayer for pardon and we get that pardon from God. I'm coming to point number three now. Point number three, the peak of performance through God. We have cleared the way on our path as we're going all the rubbles are cleared out of the way and all the thorns and all the all the cords everything are cleared out of the way now that you have number one pardon from god now the, the partnership with god number two pardon from god and you say now i'm going to start a new life the life of an achiever you're moving on and nothing will cross your way and nothing will destroy of you you're going up in jesus name yeah. i will achieve i will achieve i can achieve i will i can i must i will i can i must I look at that little bird there and I look at the eagle in the sky and God has created that little bird there to stretch the wings and flap the wings and go up and it's just a matter of time that little bird there will get to the level of that eagle there. You don't understand that. I'm talking about you. Yeah. I said I'm talking about you. Yeah. Where others have got to, you will get there. Yeah. What others have achieved with the presence of God, the partnership with God, the pardon of God, and the presence of God, where others have gone to, you will get there in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're going to read Luke chapter 1, verse 45, but just open it, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, as we're climbing, as I am climbing, as I am climbing, as I am climbing to the peak of performance. Am I losing any voice there? I said as I'm climbing to the peak of performance. Here are the steps I go through. Number one, soaring progress. Soaring progress. Soaring progress. There is something we call acceleration. Acceleration, that means if you are moving at a speed before, from today, all the load that weighs you down, all that load is gone. Yeah. Everything that is pulling you downward, all the pull is gone. Yeah. Faster, faster, yeah. more speed. Yeah. Number one, soaring progress. Number two, number two, solid platform. Solid platform. You know, you need a place to stand. And you need a platform if you're going to launch into the deep. Have you seen those people diving and swimming? There is a platform they stand on. And that platform has no crack. And they stand on that. And then they spring and spring and on. They dive. You have that solid platform under your feet from today. And the platform under your feet from where you are going to spring. And you are going to get to that peak of performance. That platform will remain solid in Jesus' name. Number three is sufficient provision. Sufficient provision. Whatever provision you need to get to the top that God has ordained for you. Sufficient provision every time in Jesus' name. You need accommodation provided. Transportation provided. Intelligence provided. IQ provided. A good school provided, helpers provided, 
financiers provided there is sufficient provision for you in Jesus name that's mine that's mine I said that is mine number four is secured protection secured protection you know sometimes you're taking the most important exam in your life everything the answer to every question is up there and the lord has put it there a hand flexible emotion to write on the computer to, to to get in every information everything is there but you are sensing there is somebody at the back of your of your head and you're looking up and you are fearful it says the security for you yeah. underneath you are the everlasting arms around you and is the power of God like the mountains surround Jerusalem inside you the Lord is inside there and the Lord will keep you up you have secured protection as you are moving on and you are going to accomplish all the will of God for your life in Jesus name number five spotless purity spotless purity somebody help me spotless purity everybody to help me spotless purity no enemy will be able to point at anything and say because of this because of this god has left you i said liar get thee behind me purity will be your life the Lord himself will keep you pure for the rest of your life in Jesus name Amen. let somebody tell me number one there Amen. somebody tell me number two Amen. number three now Amen. number four Amen. number five Amen. number six spiritual power you are a powerhouse I said you are a powerhouse. Yeah. There, is, there is something we call a generator that is inside you. And that generator will never go off and the battery will never go weak and will be working every time. Spiritual power all around you in Jesus name. Yeah. Number seven is stable performance. What kind of performance are you going to have? special performance what kind of performance are you going to have spectacular performance what kind of performance are you waiting for stable special spectacular performance the lord has granted you already if i were there now physically in your front i will shake your hand Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Let me shake your hand. You are successful in Jesus' name. Congratulations. I said congratulations. A change has come today. A new power has come into your life. As you believe it is so in Jesus' name. Let's wrap everything up now with Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Blessed. That's a great word. Blessed. Is that you? I said, is that you? Blessed is she, blessed is he that believed. Everything the Lord has revealed to us today, blessed is he and blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance in your life. There shall be a performance in your class. There shall be a performance in your exam. There shall be a performance in your provision. There shall be a performance in climbing up and going up and going higher and higher. There shall be a performance for there shall be a performance of all those things which were told her from 
the Lord. Everything you have heard today is from the Lord. There's going to be a performance in your life. Yeah. My son, performance in your life. Yeah. My daughter, performance in your life. Yeah. All those places where we are and you are hearing the sound of my voice and the message is coming to you and you are the one I've been centering on this afternoon. There's a performance in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's rise up now for a confirmation a confirmation let's rise up and we're going to have a confirmation of everything the lord had said partnership with god that's a promise pardon from god that's a prayer and then performance with god that is the peak we're going to the peak i said we're going to the peak i want you to pray there anyway you know